Indeed so. Right. Now we are on to our own personal little shout outs to non-podcast games for yeah. the next couple of awards. So there's not really going to be a lot of debate or any debate because we're just going to decide a winner each yeah. out of our few nominations. We're just going to quickly tell each other about these games that we've played that the other one probably pretty much hasn't, except one. <laughs> um, but first of all, we've got the best 2021 non-podcast game. Yes. I, I, David's I will... nominees. Yeah, Go sorry. On. My nominees are Back for Blood, Ratchet and Clank, R- Rift Apart, Hitman 3. With your nominees being? Mine are Metroid Dread, Returnal, and Lost Judgment. Mm. Uh, We've both played just Returnal and Back for Blood, right? You didn't really get on with Returnal, did you? No. um, I I perhaps need a chaperone for this game. Um, Maybe. I wasn't very good at it to start with. It's hard. yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I just wasn't getting what I was meant to be doing, and I was going through... I was dying really early on, so I was just redoing the same sort of area over and over again without really knowing why whereas like game mm. i do like run based games but i felt like i've always known what i was doing whereas i didn't know why i was doing this um yeah i guess is what i fell off with yeah i don't think the game necessarily plays out to an incredibly satisfying conclusion or explanation of why you're doing what you're doing um but once you get further in and your web you get some like you know it's kind of like dead sales in that sense where you you're unlocking better weapons for future runs and stuff Mm -hmm. um just the fact that this the way this game handles and feels i thought was really really solid like one of the best um games to play from like a technical standpoint of this year like the weapons Mm -hmm. were all really interesting and you and differently i felt different the movement and the jumping and um sort of i guess phasing i don't know what to call it like dodging or whatever yeah I don't know. It just felt like a a shmup in in a third person shooter. It was just yeah, something that I really uh, it felt it felt unique in a way to me that nothing else I've played this year or in many years has felt the way that Returnal did. Um, this is why I put it over Metroid Dread, which is you an excellent game, Metroid you? game. Yeah, I smashed Metroid Dread. I got it for Christmas. I beat it in a week or so. Um, it is just a 2D Metroid game, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I give big props to Mercury Steam, Mercury Stream, Mercury Steam, I think, because it's not Nintendo that developed this, and they did the previous one on 3DS as well, and they seem to have taken to how to build a Metroidvania game really, really well. Um, it's lovely to play it in 60 FPS, um, but it is just standard Metroid. You're still going to get the same stuff. Gravity suit, mm-hmm. spin attack, missiles, super bombs, all that sort of stuff. It's an excellent Metroid game. It's not Metroid Prime 4, which is what I really want to play, but Metroid Dread is one of the is easily the best game that's come out on Switch this year by a long, long way. Oh, great. And you, there's no way you won't enjoy it, but it's mm. just it's just another Metroid game. Yeah. They're all great. Every single one of them. Back for Blood, I didn't necessarily get on with, but you I, played I, a lot. You played a lot more of it than I have. Yeah, I've played a lot more of it. You have, and then I just hit a brick wall with it. Um, mm-hmm. And I actually think, to be honest, the brick wall is probably that the people I was playing with also stopped playing. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I we spoke about this endlessly. If you want to hear more chat about it, you can go back to our um, Left for Dead podcast. Like, I'm a big fan of these games. I think, but I think you need to play these games with a friend and as soon yeah. as the friends sort of evaporate from being able to play them, they lose a lot of their appeal to me. Um, and I also find that they were, the levels in the game were long to a fault. Too long. The, yeah, like like hours long sometimes. Um, it does seem to spam the special zombies at you way more than the yeah. other game ever did. Um, in a way that felt cheap. Yeah, it's, I, lost a, it's lost something of its soul in the transition from Left 4 Dead to this. Although the card system I think is is very good. I like that yeah. idea a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I think I think part of it is that I'm not sure how a game like this really exists in the long term in 2021 in that like mm. what people seem to come when with, with live service games and like the level and up models that were brought to us by the Call of Duty games. Like I'm just not sure how a game 
a new game because obviously Left 4 Dead still lives on, but I'm not sure how a new game sort of exists in the modern landscape and is a massive success. Um, yeah. But, you, but you're right, like the card system differentiates it, made it interesting. And actually, if you fell in love with that type of game, gave you a reason to keep going. But we'd randomly be playing this game and we'd come in contact with other players and almost without fault, if we started speaking to them, they would say the, the back end of the game is not good. Um, and that the, fir- the front end of the game was the best part. And if I'm stuck... This is the thing is, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but like, I really struggled with this. I think my, my gaming habits... I, I actually, I think like there's been a lot of decent games come out in 2021, but there's been no stellar games really for my money. Yeah. Um, and because of that, sort of my game playing habits has sort of revolved around Apex Legends and whatever we've been playing for the podcast, maybe the odd short game thrown in every so often as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so because of that, I actually struggled to come up with a top three for this. So yeah, um, I liked what I played of Bat for Blood. Wish I played more, or at least wish I'd finished it so that I could say I've seen the whole thing. Um, yeah. And I guess that's all I've got to say about it. Certainly not my winner. No. I don't really want you to say too much about Ratchet and Clank. No, I'll be. I'll that's be our really next quick. podcast game. <laughs> yeah, I guess like it's a Ratchet and Clank game that is very shiny. Um, and if you like those games, which I do, you'll have fun with them. And I guess. And you should like those games because yeah. they're really good. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to go into it too much, but it's a good game. Yeah, it's a nice sort of sparkly, shiny, happy way to start off our our year of games in 2022 on this podcast. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Look forward to that next next episode and it's the first one that looks like the movie i think mm, excellent i really yes I'm, I'm really looking forward to that time shift mechanic and i hope it's not a bit of a damp squib <laughs> i hope it's you know suitably impressive yeah because in the medium it fucking wasn't that whole like double split <laughs> oh, screen yeah, different split worlds screen, or yeah. whatever was just not that impressive so I really hope that this is. I'm probably expecting too much. Wanting it to be Titanfall two vibes, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Your winner, Alex. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, last judgment. I mean, I think for as long as we carry on doing this, because I try and aim to set myself to play at least one or two Yakuza games every year, I've still got four, five, six to play. Mm-hmm. and whatever they do from like if they do number eight as well that's going to be in the next couple of years like this is probably going to be a w- close to a winner every year for me on a non-pod game um lost judgment has some all right so the premise of this game is that you are carrying on your role as this detective from uh Kamurocho, which is where the main yakuza games are set but you end up going over to um Osaka, not Osaka. Yo, where the, where the fuck do you go? Hang on. Jesus Christ. Hold on a minute. While you're looking this up, do you think we'll, we won't, we probably won't get another one, will we? What? Lost Judgment. Unless they change the, the, the sort of actor in the main, the main character. Oh, is he the one? He's the one that they had that is, his talent agency is like super archaic. And is it really? Yeah. So this, like, so it was a big thing this year that, and it seemed like a revelation to them. But Sega suddenly realised they could make money by putting their games on PC that wasn't Total War. Yeah, so that's wanted, right. They wanted to put the Yakuza games on PC, but the talent agency won't let this actor's likeness be used in any way that is not out with what they allowed for the game. And their worry for the PC is that essentially people can get at his assets and start making him do things that he never agreed to do so they won't allow him this is the talent agency that didn't even have a youtube channel until like was it like last year i think they had one so um yeah they're super strict and they just won't let them put it on pc and pc the pc market is becoming such a big deal for sega based on how much money they yeah 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 that i just don't in the industry don't see how this how this series can progress if They've a sense ostensibly got a, got a got a franchise that they can't put on PC because they're being held over a barrel by another company. So it makes it difficult. So they would they would have yeah. to just cut him out and replace him. Yeah. I guess is the only I don't actually know do. how this game ends because I've not finished it yet. So 
maybe we can be interested to see how they yeah because yeah as far as i understood not knowing not knowing these games intricately but sort of hearing about them through you and having a more than a passing interest because i want to play these games an interest Mm. in these games from what i gathered this was like their new tentpole series they had finished with kiryu and this was like their new guy and it was quite a big deal that they even got this guy on board because in japan he's a famous actor Mm, yeah so this is kind of with with yakuza like a dragon which was the one that came out last year Mm -hmm. that switched over to a turn-based more traditional style jrpg Mm. and they have kept the like the action fighting style from the old yakuza games in this one so this Mm. is kind of like they have split them off so that they could say right if you want to do the punching and kicking stuff you've done before play the judgment games and if you want to experience what we're going for in a new you know this new idea we've got for how to take this series forward stick with the mainline yakuza's Mm -hmm. but they are going to be in a different format now so it was nice to go back and play that whole beat em up style of it again, um, especially as it's got like additional things of like that, you know, you're a detective, so you're doing detecting, you're not just beating up Yakuza guys. Um, this game handles some really sensitive shit um, and it does it relatively well. Oh, nice. It's, it's a little bit, it's a really bizarre world to be in because mm. effectively your detective gets sort of. Um, drawn into this case about a man who is arrested and on trial for groping a woman in the subway in Japan. Um, and he is effectively, at this point, I don't know for um, for certain, he's effectively used that as an alibi to get out of the fact that a person who bullied his son and caused his son to commit suicide is brutally murdered somewhere else in like a warehouse while he's already in custody for groping this woman and in his trial he actually says people are going to go find this kid by the way and you're going to find he's murdered and you're going to find him here so he like tells them in his trial that this is where this kid is but he's on he's got an alibi because he was already being arrested at that point so you then have to go to the school and investigate like bullying there so a lot of this game is set in a school and Yag, uh, the the main character uh, Yagami, um, sort of has to befriend a lot of school children and fight a lot of school children, and infiltrate a lot of school clubs for a reason to be at the school, including a dancing club, which is like a you get like a dance dance revolution mini game where he's teaching young girls to dance. Uh, Excellent. The mini games in this game are fucking insane. Like the the way that they make you join these clubs is constantly excellent. So you've got the dancing mini game, which is probably the worst one, mm-hmm. which is just you're effectively like playing Guitar Hero. Then you've got a robot club. You go to the robotics club, and you basically do like robot wars, where you have to build a robot and spec it all up, and you actually control the robot in these like robot wars fights. Then, because you get given a skateboard in this game, and you can skate around the town to get around quicker. You have to join a skate club where half of it is beating their scores Tony Hawk style, but really toned down. The other half is skateboard races where you have to like grind on stuff and jump over things to get speed boosts, which is really good fun. Then there was um, one of them you go to join the video game esports club and you basically have to get good at Virtua Fighter <laughs> to the point where because they think that this guy's cheated at Virtua Fighter because he beat some pro so you have to like investigate and find out how this guy cheated and you actually play him at the end and he has got something that makes your input stop working and it really fucked me up because it was not punching when I was pressing punch and this guy kicked my ass and that's actually part of the game that he's mugged you off um, what else was there? Uh, there's a there's a casino club. Well, there's there's this girl you have to go investigate who goes to off doing a gambling in a casino. So you've got to play like all the it like it takes all the stupid mini games that are around and then weaves them into a story that forces you to play them, which is excellent. That's what you always want. It's like mm-hmm. okay, well I could go and do the fucking play in the arcades and play Virtual Fighter, but why would I bother? But then when it makes you play it in the game, you actually get really into it and be like, oh yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm going to learn how to get good at Virtual Fire. That's awesome. Um, 
I swear there was one more club that I really wanted to talk about, but I've totally forgotten what it was. Hang on. We'll cut this bit out. But yeah, not the robot. Scale Electric's car racing, which drove me to the end of the fucking planet because I couldn't win. I just used a guide for that. I never tried. That was nonsense. I'm not learning all that shit. It's utter bollocks. Um, oh, fuck. There has to be one more thing that I wanted to, that I was going to talk about. Hang on. Let's just figure it out. Hang on. Let's do school clubs. Every school club ranked. Oh, I'm going to get spoilers for myself here, aren't I? That robotics club is so... Oh, yes! That's what it is! A fucking boxing! <laughs> so there's a kid who's like an absolute monster. There's some guy going around the town as like the masked boxer, mm-hmm. and he like beats up criminals, and they think it's this guy from the school, so you have to go and try and investigate this boxing club. And it's got a really fucking fleshed out boxing game oh, in it. Fantastic. And it plays like Fight Night. Oh, brilliant. And you and you like this guy Wait, So you're, are you in boxing? He, Kids. Yeah. No, actual adults now. Oh, you go right, off to yeah. a boxing club that this kid from school goes to as well. He's like this absolute tank. And he totally fucks you up. Is this like do they know you're an adult or do they think you're like never you know what's that what's that girl kid show where they're like the policeman woman goes to school and pretends to be a kid oh yeah like that that meme of um steve buscemi and he's like yeah. hello fellow yeah. kids no so at first you join this mystery research club um and that's how you get your way into the school so the chairman basically wants you to investigate bullying in the school to try and find out like what actually happened did this kid really get bullied did he kill himself because of it because this kid who mur- who's just been murdered was apparently a bully so we need to figure out what the fuck's going on so that's like the adult reason that he's in this school, but he needs a reason to be able to keep coming and going. And you join this mystery research club as like an outside advisor, which allows you to be there. But the girl who who's like the head of this club constantly thinks you're like a paedophile. So you have to keep going around trying to prove that you're not a paedophile to this girl. But you've been putting spy cameras around everywhere <laughs> and all this kind of shit. Um, but uh, so, yeah, there's that all that shit going on but the boxing is so good like i'm annoyed when i can't progress the boxing mini game because it's like one of the best boxing games i've ever played it's so it fun is. you've got proper like you know you put your guard you can go body shots head shots you've got power moves you and then he teaches you like better moves on top that are totally different it's not like mm. the fighting from the actual game it's a totally separate style of doing it fucking awesome um and yeah the game itself is still as compelling as it always was because you've still got to do all these crazy like sub stories and all these investigation things where you're like using spy cameras and drones and yeah i just if you need somewhere to get started and you don't want to go straight into the yakuza games because there's like eight of them these two judgment games are both brilliant but this one is definitely a massive step up from the first one and I cannot believe it's my game of the year purely because it's got cool skateboarding and boxing in it. It's got nothing to do with the actual game. Uh, so yeah, that's my winner. It's Lost Judgment. Now let's hear about your winner. My winner is Hit- Hitman Three, and I just think like the packet, the story of the Hitman games is absolutely fantastic, and that it's like a game that Square Enix were constantly disappointed with the sales figures of. That yeah, um, prior to the new Hitman games coming out, the developer was. IO Interactive were about to go out of business and this was like their last roll of the dice to try and stay in business and keep their jobs um, and they just sort of created that like this sort of semi-serious but doesn't take it sort of tongue-in-cheek game in which you're doing ridiculous things like this guy is blatantly he's like a bald guy with a barcode in the back of his head and he's like infiltrating his way and like on stage to be like catwalk models or drummers in a band on stage or it, it, I just love the playground that they've created to let you sort of yeah. engage with and mess around and, and and then beyond that I love the way they've supported it so like when Hitman 3 came out Hitman 1 and 2 also comes into the game with updated controls and updated visuals so good and it's all in there with all the DLC and then they've just announced that they're going to continue with sort of like another season of Hitman in 2022 nice in which more comes out and I just love that they've created this sort of this amazing sort of sandbox playground that is just 
so inclusive in what what a product it is. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, and just like the way that they've recreated. So like, there's. I think if you go back to the original Hitman games, they're basically unplayable. They're mm, so absolutely so difficult and clunky. Whereas these games still retain the feel of it. Because there was that one, there was a couple in between, wasn't there? You've got like Hitman and Hitman Silent Assassin and all that shit. Then you've got those two ones on the Xbox 360 that were oh, trying, trying to be like, yeah, like shooters or whatever. Games, yeah. yeah, where they basically ruined it. And yeah. now these ones have been the perfect marriage of both, where, as you said, you're doing all this wacky shit. There's multiple ways to do all the assassinations, but the game is, if you want it to, will help you do it. Yeah, the way you're supposed to do it, because those are the bits that put me off all the old ones, because it's so all over the place. And the variety in things you can do is also amazing. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to think of a good example is like, like you get the one. There's a level where you have to the, the first level where you're in Dubai in the Burj Khalifa, I think. But basically, you're on a floor and you're at a party, and you've got to sort of this is like the classic Hitman ep, like game mode in which you're you start as an invitee to the party and you've got to try and wheedle your way around to figure out where this where who your targets are and different ways that you want to kill them yeah the classic lots of people mingling in crowds as you would like to see and it, but then there's also one where you go to dartmoor in england and you go to this mansion that's got this lady in it and her family are all there and basically she heard that an assassin was out to get her so she locked herself up but you arrive when there's a private investigator arriving and you can kill the private investigator and then embark upon this like Poirot, Miss Marple-like mission of discovery to find out who killed who. And if you follow it, you can you can treat it like a hitman level and go off piste and become a security guard and find your way to infiltrate into different, different areas of the house and kill who you need to kill. Or you can just stay as a private investigator and sort of wheedle your way around and sort of find clues that lead you to different areas that eventually lead to like a big sort of again Poirot final where the sort of killer is revealed and then you can go after them um that is and, magnificent and then That's other, so clever it is and it does it does things like that throughout the game that are just so well done and then there's like but even like i don't know little things and this is just another classic one where you end up in a mansion in italy i think and you can masquerade as a as a man who is it's it seems like he killed his mum, but he's like a proper mummy's boy and he's your target. And you can basically give him a nervous breakdown by pretending to be your his dead mum's ghost. And then uh <laughs> and a, a psychiatrist arrives and you can be the psychiatrist and basically like strangle him while he's unloading <laughs> all these life problems to you about how he struggled with his mummy issues and stuff like that. And it's just it's a game that is he telling you about you as the ghost as well? No. So the ghost one, he ends up killing himself. Oh, so he... so it's not like you, you pretend to be the ghost. Then he goes to therapy and then you go talk to him about how you <laughs> were just the ghost that made him go to therapy and kill him in therapy. No, no. So there's oh, mul okay. multiple ways to do this. And then there's like other ones where you like, and it's just these little incidental stories as well. Like when you arrive, it's not obvious how to get into the level. And then you, you yeah. hear, you walk past and you hear this lady shouting at her brother he's got his he's got, she's got her brother a job in the house as like a, a waiter boy a sort of kitchen mm -hmm. hand sort of guy and you can like while he's arguing with his sister you can sneak into his bedroom and steal his uniform and key and then just like walk in and it's just like it just feels intelligently made but it's also really funny at the same time um, yeah yeah and i don't want to wish go i was in, better at these games well i don't want to really go into do. too much because i'm convinced i can figure out a way that we can play this game together and enjoy it i just need to i need to think about it because yeah so like hand off the right. controller is just like is the most fun i've had this playing with this game yeah it might um, need to be another another visit yeah i think so and it, yeah it's just, it's just it's just so good it's so good and i guess there we it. go yeah yeah so you, well best lost judgment and hitman 3 that's it i'm looking for the list there it goes best 2021 non-pod game alex has got nominees metroid dread and returnal with the winner being lost judgment and mine are back for blood ratchet and clank rift apart with the winner being hitman 3 